Welcome to this talk about rethinking generalization to understand deep learning presented by the Stanford Scholar Initiative. In artificial neural networks, for example, like a convolution neural network shown here, the number of parameters is much, much greater than the number of samples they are trained on. Consider this 32 by 32 grayscale input image. When a 5 by 5 filter is applied, we get a feature map of 28 by 28. If four filters are applied, we will have four feature maps. The total number of learning parameters for convolution layer C1 is 104. This gives them enough capacity for brute force memorization, which is large enough to shatter the training data. Despite this, most deep neural network models exhibit remarkably small generalization error, while at the same time, it is easy to come up with model architectures that generalize poorly. This questions our understanding of deep neural networks, as we don't know how to distinguish between the two cases. This paper talks about rethinking generalization. So what is the importance of this study? Rethinking generalization can help us to increase the interpretability of neural networks, to come up with more reliable and principled model architectures, and to give better theoretical explanations for the model's performance on test and training sets. Rethinking generalization is hard because it requires us to explore neural networks from a completely different perspective. The questions we seek answers to are, what distinguishes neural networks that generalize well from those that don't? Can it be explained by traditional theoretical approaches? How can we understand the effective model capacity of feedforward neural networks and its effect on generalization ability? They try to problematize the traditional view of generalization by showing that it is not capable of distinguishing between neural networks that have radically different generalization performance. This was done by running some randomization tests explaining the role of explicit and implicit regularizers in generalization and analyzing the expressive power of neural nets on a finite sample. They used a variant of the well-known randomization test from non-parametric statistics as a core idea of their methodology. Let's talk about fitting random labels and pixels. As a first set of experiments, they took a candidate architecture model and trained true data and the copy of this true data in which the true labels were replaced by random labels. In the second set of experiments, the image data were either permuted or replaced by random pixels. They observed that with random labels, once the fitting starts, it converges quickly and fits training set perfectly without changing learning rate schedule. They also experimented by performing label corruption. This was done by varying the degree of randomization from no noise signals to full noise signals. A significant slowdown was expected but not observed through the experiment. And the test error or generalization error converges to 90% when the label corruption approaches one. They try to decode the role of explicit regularizers in deep learning by running the tests on AlexNet, Inception, and MLP architectures with Cypher 10 and ImageNet datasets by turning explicit regularization on and off. Surprisingly, with all of the regularizers turned off, the experiment results for Cypher 10 and ImageNet show that there was very little difference. To understand the role of implicit regularizers, they ran various tests and found that early stopping could potentially improve generalization in ImageNet and is not necessarily helpful on Cypher 10, but batch normalization improves generalization. They found that bigger gains could be achieved by simply changing the model architecture than using an implicit or explicit regularization technique. They concluded that regularizers only help to marginally improve generalization performance, but are not the fundamental reason for achieving it. They then explored the finite sample expressivity of deep networks and found that a neural net with a weight complexity of big O of number of samples plus input dimensions is sufficient to memorize a finite sample of n entries. Consider a two-dipped RULU network with an input of five entries and input dimension of three as shown in the figure. Given weights 1, 2, 3, the input matrix transforms into a vector. Choosing RULU thresholds interleaved with vector values without losing generality, the first vector component will result in RULU output. And with all vector components, RULU output looks like this. The output is an invertible triangular matrix. This proves 2 times 5 plus 3 parameters can memorize any labeling. The diagonal entries of this matrix has a bearing on the norm of the final weight so we can bound it. From where do deep networks get their generalization performance? Consider image processing using linear models. Since the input dimensions are much greater than training samples, linear algebra suggests infinite solutions. 
which one generalizes well? An analysis of SDD shows that what it achieves is equivalent to the kernel trick. It so turns out that SDD itself can be seen as implicitly regularizing. Here are the results on various data sets. Another observation is that SDD will converge to minimal L2 norm solution, which seems to generalize well. But minimum norm alone does not explain everything as seen in the counterexample. On a concluding note, findings imply that models are rich enough to memorize training data, and the traditional view is incapable of explaining generalization ability of neural networks, whereas SDD is found to have self-regularizing properties. This shows that a precise formal measure is yet to be discovered. Thanks for watching.